Just making a quick video. Sorry, I don't look like much has changed. So uh, the third brake light I put in there, that's gonna be scrapped. Gonna patch that hole back up because I ordered a spoiler for the car and it's gonna look uh, something like this one. A little bit thicker and then right here in the spoiler, it's gonna have a, a third brake light. So I don't need a fourth brake light. So I'm gonna fill that in. The other thing was uh, I scrapped the project here with the uh, spoiler going up and down with the Porsche Boxster. So I put uh, fiberglass on, underneath this whole thoroughglaze in there and then on the top I just put Bondo because Bondo is a lot easier to sand and finish and make it look good. What else? So uh, working on the uh, door, rocker panel, whatever you want to call it, door jams. If you remember before, this was real high here, like the old Corvettes or, or the uh, Viper. It's just hard when you're getting in and out of the car. You got this big ledge sticking up there, so I don't like it. I dropped it down, and I'm uh, getting it just a rough, uh, just get a rough for the uh, professionals to finish it, not me. The other thing, I cut this hole open here for the gas. What's weird is when I look at that, that looks huge. It looks too, way too big. But this is the exact door from the Porsche Boxster, so I got the same dimensions. Uh, what's weird is I would never look at a Porsche Boxster and say, wow, that's too big. But I don't know. On here, I don't know. It kind of looks too big to me. And uh, you can see the fiberglass. It's kind of thick. I'm thinking it's going to have the body shop thicken it up. And then uh, I'm always thinking to make it smaller on the sides because they really don't need to be that big. Luckily, I reinforced this for like one of the first things I did with the car all the way around all the wheel wells. So this is still really strong here. It won't even move even though it's kind of close to that hole, right? So this is insecure. It's, uh, it might have to come up. We'll see. Maybe right there. But I want to make sure the wheel don't hit it. Clearance. And that might be the other thing is uh, a 19 inch might be pushing it when I drop it down. So I might have to be stuck with 18 inch on the front. But I guess as long as I get the right uh, low profile, it should look all right. The big thing is I really want like 21 inch on the rear, but I don't know if you can go that big from 18, you know, all the way to 21 inch that much. I know a lot of cars will have one inch difference. So I don't know. Um, I guess it depends on the way you have the uh, coilovers adjusted. You can compensate by bringing the coilovers down a little bit more if the wheels in the back are a lot higher. But it's still going to be riding higher in the back. So we'll see. Maybe 20 inch on the rear, just 2 inch difference from the front. Working on a lot of these, uh, these two vents on both sides. They were really thin before, so thicken it up. And then I also put a door, door glaze on there because uh, those edges need to be really uh, strong. And then uh, this before came straight down here. To me, it just didn't look right. It needs to be sweep back like you see this part is swept back on the car. Just my opinion, the way it looks, I think it's going to look better. But this is probably going to be covered with uh, that carbon fiber, fiber uh, you know, body wraps they like to do on cars. That's going to be covered with carbon fiber. This piece here is going to be covered on both sides of carbon fiber wrap. And then the whole roof, two pieces. Uh, you know, so I just take it to one of the shops that does body wraps. Yeah, it won't be carbon fiber, but that stuff looks pretty good. I had it before on the old car that I built, and I did it all in here, and it looked real. And I did it. So I'll just take it to some professional place and then do it. So what else? Oh yeah, so I filled in these little pieces here. This was uh, both sides, it's hard to tell. But it, it went way over here in like a point. That's not right, it's supposed to be here in the, the way it's supposed to be designed. If the body was, the kit was a little bit off. So fill that in, rough, it's roughed, right? The, let the professional fix that. The other thing is, um, 
So I had like a dozen different body shots come over and give me estimates and they're like all over the place. But also on top of that is I had to go and check them out because this isn't some car you are gonna take off a wreck fender and slap on a new one, some insurance claim. Somebody's really need to know what they're doing. So I weeded out a couple that even after the estimates, there's no way I'd want them touching the car. <laughs> and uh, trying to narrow it down a couple, but it's a, just a long hassle of a project, man. Because some people are like, estimates are like way off the scale, like ridiculous. And then other people is like really, really low. And you think, well, we could save a lot of money, but end result, you don't want to do all this work and then have some crummy job, right? Everybody's saying to use solvent-based paints on there. I know with all the new cars, I think they use water-based because, uh, for the environment and all that, but people thinking that the, uh, the solvent base a little bit better. Well, if you remember from the last video, so this this whole thing's a steel frame, right? But this is all knocked down like some beaver was chewing on it, and uh, I had to clean all that up and fix it. It was knocked out before because it was bent and it was sticking out too far to sh have a piece of glass over the plexiglass window. So I cleaned it up. It's a little bit too thick on the bottom, but <clears throat> the body shop can finish that. The other thing is, uh, this roof, underneath this roof, the body curves around and goes like that. But this was curving around like right there on the edge, and I felt that there wasn't enough of this body to rest on that. So uh, I kind of made underneath here a lot bigger piece, uh, part of the body, so that I had something to rest on better, more secure. Cleaned it up. Uh, a lot more, but it's still really rough, right? The, the body people got to really clean up all the gaps. The, uh, the spacing in the windshield, you can see it's a little bit low on this side compared to the other side, but I'm thinking that's about what I want. It's a little, maybe the size of a pencil or a little bit less, and then you're just going to have the rubber sealer in there, RTV or windshield, and no molding or anything. And that's the look I wanted on there. I don't know if I ever showed this down in here before, but this on the horse box to ride, this is out under the, outside the windshield. The, you know, the current, the other windshield used to go right, right to here. So all this was outside and it had uh, the cowling and all that. So now that's part of the, inside the interior. The big thing is with the windshield wiper, there's just no way I'm going to be able to use that original windshield wiper motor, even with a bunch of brackets and all, I have to relocate it. But then again, this car's never going to be driven in the rain. So I'll decide about that. We'll see. Door's still looking rough, really rough. I'm trying to clean it up, but... I just hate doing body work. I'm hoping in the next two weeks that I can finalize somebody to work on the car and do it. Uh, most of the people are saying like they need a one guy focused for like a month, eight hours a day, but I don't know. I look at it, I, I think somebody knows what they're doing. Is it really gonna take four weeks of eight hours a day to do this? But I'm no body man, so I don't know. It just seems like a little overkill. Obviously, you can see the gaps are terrible, right? Crooked. Probably you could go, I mean, I, I think I made them too, too narrow, so it could go a little wider, and while you make them wider, they might get straightened up. This uh, rear diffuser is going to come back off because it's it's still not perfect fit. I, I kind of was going to leave it that close, but <clears throat> I think once you get in close up to, close to the car and you look down on it, you're going to see those gaps and uh, you got to make it a little bit. I don't want it to mold like it's a set, same, like attached, but it needs to be a little bit tighter fit. your seat on it was just sitting in there anyways but uh I guess you can see I don't know if I ever showed the interior very much but uh you 
you can see the steel uh, bracing that I framed in all that. I mean, there was nothing there on the outside. I had to mold all that in with all fiberglass and and I, uh, I put the roll bar, the box to roll bar back in there. It's attached in, a, attached in the original spots because uh, the seat belt's actually attached to this little bolt hole there. And also I attached the roof to it or the rear trunk hatch, whatever you want to call it. So. I don't know what about the color. I mean, <clears throat> I guess this color would go with red. These seats are pretty uh, wore out, but I see they sell uh, kits. You could just replace this covers yourself on the seats. It's not too expensive for boxers. But now I'm not sure on the color. I'm still kicking it around. I'm not sure if I wanted this. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell, but that's the orange. The orange, or I want the red. My first one I did, the red one, but that was a uh, Diablo. I definitely don't want white. I think that looks terrible. The blue, I don't like that either for a sports car. But all these pictures, they really help when you're trying to figure stuff out. I mean, a lot of these, these scenes are, were not in there on this car because it's two pieces on mine it was uh one piece so i had to put those in there with a dremel tool to make it look like a separate piece and then uh you can see this this piece here is a separate piece but mine was too but then all the bondo work and everything trying to smooth things out it kind of made it join one piece so i had to put seams back in there but uh we'll see about these wheels, I don't know which ones I like. I mean, a lot of places sell the wheels ridiculously priced too, so I don't know what I'll end up going with. I don't know, I kind of like the black wheels, but we'll see. You guys are getting seasick. What else? I put the door off a couple weeks ago, put it back on. I can't remember if I filmed it with it off or on, but I was working on the inner door panel a nightmare. I hate doing that kind of work, interior work, and I get it as close as I can and then uh, have an interior shop finish it. It's going to be some work in here, but it's easy for these guys to make uh, false panels or whatever you want to call them, cover all this stuff up and make it look really good. I'm going to use a, I'm going to, it came with a bunch of thick rubber uh, carpet here. It's like three, four inches thick here that covers all this engine compartment. But it still felt like when I drove the car, I didn't drive it very many times before I cut it in half, but it felt like it was warm. I mean, even though it had that padding because the engine's right there. So I'm going to cover it with this stuff. It's kind of like Dynamat. I'm going to cover all that. Try to keep the heat in there. The other thing is that when I sat in the car before, before it was stretched, the back of that seat was with me sitting there was like banged up against there so they transfer heat from the engine right into my back but you can see the seats in a position where I'd probably have it and look how much room now we'll see what I put if I could get some uh, speaker boxes and subwoofers that would be kind of good a lot of room there to put them in there we'll see that's a long way away you know <laughs> And we got the paint on the car. Don't worry about no stereo. I think that's it. So my spoiler, like I said, should be here in a couple weeks. And uh, it's a good thought, I guess, doing the porch box was going up and down with speed, but technically on that real car, this thing is supposed to go up like this with speed, right? But this is fused into the car as part of the it's not a separate piece so there's no way to make that work and i don't know if those ones when they attach them they must deactivate that because i don't know if uh i don't think they go up i don't know that's interesting though because i've seen a lot of them on youtube where they're you know the stock ones without a spoiler 
the external spoiler. It goes up when you get on a certain speed, but I never seen one where they add on the real high spoilers like I'm gonna put on there. If they must deactivate it because that might be kind of weird, this thing lifting up with a spoiler that's already on there like a foot high already. I don't know. There's a locking mechanism. Uh, so that was from a uh, Saturn. Oh, wait a minute, let me think. It's been a while. Yeah, this one was from a Saturn. I didn't use the Porsche Boxster ones because <clears throat> they were just way too big and bulky. They wouldn't fit in there. So it's pretty rough in there now, but all this is welded in. There's steel underneath there. It's pretty sturdy. <clears throat> The weird thing about this car is uh, the latch, right, to release the door is here. So if you pull a handle, you're not going to release nothing here because it's this. There's nothing to release. So when you pull the door handle, how's that going to work? I have to run a wire down through there and come back around electrically and put a puller on it, you know, a popper. It's going to put a popper on it anyways, electrical. So I don't know if I'm gonna put some handle here. I think that might not look right. I'll probably just put the handle like it should be in the uh, in the door. And then it's gonna be, when you pull it, it's gonna, it's not gonna be mechanical. It's gonna be like electrical uh, contact when you pull it. And then it'll, it'll activate the popper back here. So what I do now is just this wire is on there now. This just pull back to open it. But it's electric, so I can electric lock the doors. There's a little a solenoid for the electric lock and unlock. I mean, I don't know which uh, door lock mechanism people used. I mean, I went and got the door because I needed the glass and I needed the window uh, regulators, and I figured, you know, I might as well use the door locking mechanism. It's, I mean, I probably. Could have maybe used a smaller one, but it'll fit in there. And then it's going to be covered with uh, plastic and a big plastic piece once they clean all that up, right? The body shop. So the only piece, this will be open right here for this thing to slot down in there. The striker. So we'll see. This piece I put in here, it just annoys me. It's a piece of steel welded in there and it goes all the way over here. This is so secure now. I'm going to think I'm going to cut that off. It just looks terrible. Cut that piece. It doesn't have one on the other side. And uh, because there's going to be a big mesh in there, right? And you're probably going to be able to see that uh, plastic mesh grill. The other thing is I covered uh, all this inside already with a uh, fat mat. You know, it's like Dynamat. Fat mat, it covered all that inside there because uh, when you're driving down a road, what I noticed about that, the first car I did, is when rocks are flying up, these things make, it sounds like a tin can because it's not OEM, right? So I tried to cover all of it on the other side with that fat mat so when rocks and stuff hits this inside the wheel well, it doesn't sound, you know, it sounds more solid. This piece is like all cut up. I don't know, it's done, not doing much, but it's supposed to block the air a little bit, I guess, right here. If you can see, it was cut. Uh, it was on the other car. Thinking that's about it for now. Sorry to say, I got no, not much new to report. Worked on this a little bit. This is really high, this over here. I don't know why I keep doing putzing around doing this body work when that's what I'm gonna pay somebody to do. I'm gonna have to make a cowling cowl for in there out of fiberglass and then painted gloss black to fill all that in. I, technically, that's the way the windshield wiper is supposed to come up out of that hole. I want this uh, windshield drop down another half inch. It's a little too high because when the wind's coming, you don't want to, even though it is higher than it right now, you don't want it to grab that lip, right? Drive down the highway, rip the windshield. 
I guess you can see from that side, it is definitely lower, but I think just to be on the safe side, go a little lower because once I put the windshield sealer or RTV, it might raise it up a little. I think this thing here is an amp for the stereo. Put it up there. There's the filter that should be outside. <laughs> Getting fresh air, so that's going to be something I'll have to figure out. I'm thinking of putting back here since uh, since all this is open, right? There's going to be a mesh in there, grill, meshing these two little things on two on each side, right? But in here, it's like layered glass. Uh, they're almost shaped, where are shaped canvas? Tri triangular pieces, trapezoid, some shape. <laughs> And they're gonna be layers like steps, two or three pieces of that monitor from underneath. So the problem is, right, if it gets wet, all that water's going inside there, and this is an interior of the car. This is in uh, really watertight. So I'm thinking of put some kind of, build something underneath there, it's like a drain, so it can catch it, but you won't notice it. Some kind of funnel mechanism piece, like the shape of this, but underneath it lower. So when the rain comes in there, it goes in it, and then it'll run out the side, down out of the car. Even same here, I mean, you don't want water going in there. This is there, uh, on this box, there, there's a fuse panel back here, a big fuse panel back here, and there's a lot of electrical in the uh, PCM, you know, the, the brains is back here. So this can't get wet. I don't think the way the layer of glasses that rain can get in there because it overlaps a lot, but definitely where the mesh holes are at, rain could get in there if I were to get stuck in the rain somewhere. I try to seal all this up. Uh, you can see it's all sealed up now to make it watertight. Actually, you can see there's a little plug there. That's interesting. Maybe I can use that to, as a drain or have it run right out of there. So we'll see. Right now it still has the caps on it, catalytic converters. You can see right there. And then and then my new muffler piece connects on there, goes all the way back. Um, see it there. I kind of wanted to wrap it a little more with the header wrap. These ain't headers, but header wrap to keep that heat off that uh, rubber boot. So we'll see, maybe put some more. I got more of it. But blue well, definitely wasn't my first choice, but for some reason, the fancy colors, black and common colors, are more money. And I figure, I don't care, I'll just spray with uh, header wraps sealer stuff. You know, that paint that seals in the header wrap, I'm going to paint it silver probably, or black. But, uh, actually it sounded pretty good for the muffler, it was on there. I wasted like tons of work fabbing up my own muffler, made it with these big three inch pipes and all this. It has so much resonance and it's giving me a headache just hearing the thing idle. So this, I bought online out of this place out of Texas. I think it's her name on there. I forget even what that. It's been like a year now. I'm sure it's on that label in there, but I forget. But they're the same ones sold all the suspension. They sell a lot of stuff for Boxsters and other cars. But all that's gonna be covered with black mesh right there. All right, I guess that's it.